I will. So let's continue on. Is Yeshua, is he Jesus Christos? Is he God or Jah? And let's continue the discussion and teaching on the nature of God. And the nature of God is contained, or at least the equation of it, is contained in the secret of the names of God. The names of God that we have Hebraically, that we have from the scriptures and through the testimony of the scriptures. As our God, Father, the King of Kings says, for our part, we glory in the Bible. He says, for my part, but I and I, as true Rastafari say, for I and I part, for our part, we glory. Because we know that the glory of God is called in Hebrew the Shekinah or the Shekinah or the Shekinah. Some say the shock and awe, the kubr, the kubr of God, the kubr of God. Now we know we have the kubr in the guest, and that's another link that we can follow, that we can study up on, and put that in your notes, brothers and sisters. But let's continue with this particular um, reasoning and groundation on whether we agree or disagree with those who say that Jesus or Jesus or Yeshua is not God or he's not Jah. The first thing is let's look at the name God and Jah for a moment. Did you notice something else in this? That underneath we put under God, the first, the primary, the root word for God in the Hebraic is El. Is El as in Elohim, right? And then we have Elohe. And then we have Elohim. Now under Jah, Jah Hebraically is Yah. And as a tetragrammaton is the WH, the, the, the YH, you could, uh, the YHWH. The Y-H-W-H. Some say V in the Germanic, Jewish, Polish tradition, but we're not German Jews or Ashkenazi Jews. We are Ethiopian Hebrew. We are Rastafari, Judeans, in other words. But anyway, Yahweh is the long form. Like Elohim is the long form. The short form is El, and the, the short form of God is El, and the short form of Jah is Yah. Right? So we now have to overstand and study to show ourselves approved, to show ourselves. And to show ourselves means more than just you show up like for a test or something like that and you're approved. That's one mundane level. But in the greater level of being approved means that we will be overcomers in this cosmic drama that we are currently involved in, the so-called end of the world or the end of the world system, the Gentile world system, and the church age, which will also be the end of the kingdom of heaven age, the fulfillment of that, and the bringing on now of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is not the kingdom of God, but they are related. That's also a teaching that we need to understand, because there's a practical and a applicable level to all of this. So we was at Hebrews, and we was in Hebrews chapter 5, Hebrews chapter 5, and we touched on Melchizedek, how Yesus Christus, Yehoshua HaMoshia, is called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And then we got to the, the appeal and the warning from verse 11 to verse 14 of chapter 5, which says, Of whom we have many things to say, of Melchizedek, we, even I and I, have many things to say, even of Abba Kedus, many things to say, but the same is true, and hard to be uttered. They're very hard to be really spoken on. Seeing ye are dull of hearing, you are dull of the Shema, of the real Shema. Because the Shema, which is interesting about the word Shema, as in our, in our witness, when we raise that one finger, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one, Yahweh Ahad, Ahadu Amla, the one God. But now in the one God, one of the first mysteries, or one of the mysteries in the first, in the one God is the Trinity. Is the Trinity or the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now many would think this is something new, like it's a new age thing or, or it was a new thing borrowed from India, borrowed from here. No, this goes back to the Old Testament. This goes back to the very creation. This goes back to the beginning. 
Now, there are many different versions of the Trinity in different languages, like in different ideas of God. A lot of them have good kind of moral, ethical values, you know, that are similar. And people say, well, that's the same thing because it's all coming from one root. But the true, the true line that we know is that Hebraic line or that Judaic line, as Christ himself said, that salvation is of the Jews. Ye worship what you know not. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Judeans, or salvation is of Yehuda. Now, from that lineage comes, for us in this time of Rastafari revelation, comes the Moa Anbesa Za'ima Negeda Yehuda, or Kedamawi Haila Selase. His basic title, the line of Judah hath prevailed, Haile Selassie I, elect of God, king of kings of Ethiopia. Now, another point to put down is that a king, when a king's son is not a king, he's the king's son, and his title would be Lord. So the son, Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus, is the son of the father, so he is Lord, but the father is king, even king of kings, king of all other true kings in creation is, if they are, if they are true to the true God, then God is their father as well. Then God is their father as well. So he has revealed himself to all of his creatures, but in the Hebrews or in the Beta Israel, He's had a special relationship. You understand? There's a special relationship that he's had through the, the, the line of Abraham, the generation, Isaac, the generation also of David, to his imperial majesty, and even us who are, who are connected to that lineage as well as the descendants of the once lost but now found data is Israel. We so-called blacks, Africans in the diaspora from the slave trade, the transatlantic or Ethiopic Ocean slave trade. So he says right here that they were dull of the Shema. They were dull of hearing. And the word hearing, if you study the word hearing Hebraically, or even the Schofield or the Strong's, the Strong's Bible Concordance, and other study materials like that will show you that the word to hear also has within it obedience. And from an Ethiopic level, we say semma or tesema. Tesema means also to feel. Like when we say, you feel what I'm saying? Do you feel me? We say that now in English, but it's coming from that same root because in the Hebraic and the Ethiopic, that word is used from that root semma or shema. And then we have tesema, which means to feel. But it also means to obey. It means if you feel it, then you will do it, then you will obey it, then you will heed it. So they were dull of hearing the word and applying it. So maybe they only heard 10% of the word and only were applying maybe 2 or 3% of that 10%. They didn't, hear, they didn't hear and they wasn't able to obey. So he said they're dull of hearing. For when, for the time, Ye ought to be teachers. In other words, at the time that they should have been teachers of this, this is a part of the kingdom and the so-called last days or the end of the Gentile world power's time. Bible prophecy says there will be an increase in preaching and in teaching. That there will be teachers. Ye have need that one teach you again. Teach you again. In other words, it's like remedial. This is like remedial, teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles. The word oracles means the words, like or oral. Oral is the mouth. Oral is the words. In other words, oral tradition, that which was only communicated word of mouth. So these oracles are the words of God. What are the first principles of the words of God? And are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat that have need of the basic milk, in other words, to be, in a sense, breastfed again, have to go back to, to be born again, when you're born again, and then be fed on the two breasts, the Old Testament and New Testament, to be breastfed again so you can then get that basic nutrients and grow, and your bones can be strong, so forth and so on, your teeth can be strong, so that you'll be able to so-called eat solid food or strong meat. Now it goes on and says, for everyone that useth milk 
is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Everyone that uses, and everyone that sucks milk in that sense, these basic teachings are unskillful in the word of righteousness or in the ma'at, or unskillful in, as says, Moses was learned in the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in word and deed. He was mighty in the word he spoke, and he could actually do some of those mystical, metaphysical, supernatural tricks that it seems to be. You know? But they're not really tricks. It's a higher level of science. He was able to do it, but the key of it, is also our walk and our, in other words, you may know the knowledge, but you're not able to harmonize your, your carbon organic psychological structure. So you've got the knowledge, but you don't have the humility that really becomes the battery for that transcendental operation in the real world, like walk on water or do any of these things that Christ did. And Christ said that if we are in him, we'll do the same things he did and greater things would we be able to do as well? So that one is a babe. So at the babe level, one is unskillful. That uns unskillful means lack the wisdom. And the word wisdom means the technology. There is technology in the way of God. I mean, even if you look at the demonstration of La Labella or Oxum, you see there's a great technology. They're wondering whether extraterrestrials, whether aliens, who did it. The ones who did it were skillful in the word of righteousness, and like Moses, they understood those metaphysical mysteries to transmute matter to the antimatter and you move in heavy things like the light things, so forth and so on. Now, there's a discipline. This is why discipleship is that first level. There's a discipline. So it says, but strong meat or solid food belongeth to them that are of full age. That means to those who are mature. They understand when they look at the word God and I say, break down the word God for me. And they're able to say, well, God at the root is El in the Hebrew, and El means power or might. And then Elohe, what part is Elohe? Either my God or as Elohe, El Elohe Israel is the way we describe the God of, the God of Israel, and Elohim. Elohim is God too, but it's God the powers, the God of the seven, the God of the powers. And then you're able to break this down and understand those basic things. So then when you're at the higher level, of operation, you can say, well, God and Jah, El and Yah, this is Elijah. This is Elijah right here. So this right before you, even in the question I thought was very good, it was Elijah. Is Jesus God or Jah? Is he Elijah? Are we talking about the man Elijah? You understand he was carrying divinity, but are we talking about the man Elijah? Or are we talking about something a little bit more, more higher, like Hila? What, what do we mean by this? Well, let's go forward with this teaching. We were saying that El, from the, 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 the Hebraic, El in the Hebraic, in the Ethiopic, since Ethiopic was before Hebrew, right? In the Ethiopic, we have Ayele, you understand, which is also Ha-Yele, which means he was overpowering, he prevailed, or he was powerful, right? But now when we look now in... The Bible, we have Eliah, and the name Eliah is Elijah, like the book of Elijah is the Metaf Kedus, the book of Elijah, because it has the codes in it. But even with the codes, we have to be able to understand and comprehend and interpret. This is why we talk about getting lost in translation. And many get lost in translation concerning this controversial question. It's a good question. Because people will ask, is Jesus God? Is he God? Yes, he is in God, according to the Bible, according to the Word. Yes, he is in God. Yes, he is of God. Yes, he is from God. But he is not God the Father. Is he God the Son? As the Son is a demonstration of God, yes, and of that family, and of that essence, yes, but he is not God the Father. The Father is the first, and he is after the first, and he left with us the third part of that God, which is the Holy Spirit. And this is what the Bible teaches is through the Holy Spirit now. If we are in proper relationship and we grow through the Holy Spirit, that we will attain that that regeneration we will attain that 
transfiguration. You know, the Bible talks about in the last days and time, there's that transfiguration, but all of this is prep time. All of this is preparatory time. That's why it says right here, but strong meat belongeth to them that are full age maturity, even those who by reason of use have their senses. Look at that. Has their senses, our five senses and our ten senses, have our senses exercised. That means that it's an exercise. That means that there's a practice. That means that ultimately, with a true practice based on the true system, there will be um, a performance. There's able to be a demonstration. This is why Jesus Christus, Jesus Christ, is so important for us because he's that demonstration. He's that demonstration of the Father, of the Father's way. He came to restore us into something that we lost. In other words, we already had that at one time in the beginning, but we had lost that. Now he sends his son to restore us through restoring that lost sheep of the Beta Israel, and that was the Judeans or the tribe of Judah, restoring that particular tribe. But here it's saying that have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, when you go to chapter 6, Verse 1, it says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Leave, so there are principles of the doctrine is the teaching of the Messiah, the Moshiach. Let us go on to perfection. So we cannot get to perfection without first having mastered the principles of the doctrine of the teaching of Christ. Not laying again, it says, the foundation of repentance, because repentance, go back to John. John was sent to baptize them with water into that repentance, and Christ then came to baptize with the Spirit and with fire. So not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. That's why when you're born again, you have to mortify the old man. You know, the old man has to die. The old psychological nature has to die. The psycho, suke, suke means soul. So that old soul, that old psychological nature, some misunderstand that and go out and kill themselves. And they think that's the, physically because they miss, they get lost in translation, in other words. They get lost in translation and of faith, and of faith towards God. So when you look at chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, it's going to lay out something very beautiful. And the reason why we're going over that is we're saying that there's an order. There's an order. And this question right here shows how the um, church age forsook its rightful responsibility in teaching the lay men and the lay women the basic doctrines of Christ, the basic foundation of repentance, of faith towards God, of doctrine of baptism, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. So it's laying down here when you read it. It's showing that we, we're leaving, therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Let us go on to perfection. Not laying again, not laying down these. We already dealt with these particular teachings. But here's the question we have to ask as newborns. Is do we understand those that 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 that, that the, the principles of the doctrine of Christ? When we come to follow Christ, we said, I'll follow Christ. But they're kind of lost in this translation, misunderstand. They are, they, are, they are sincere in what they're saying, but because they lack the knowledge of the word, they are not going to apply that which will take them to the next level of the birth and the maturity. Because, see, God, the Almighty Christ, requires this in order for this age to be summed up. This is why I said before the end, they, the kingdom of heaven will be preached everywhere. And there was a true, not just ones calling themselves nominal Christian, but the true teaching will get out there in order to fulfill the number. There's a certain number. The devil knows it's that number. That's why it keeps everyone distracted or self-content on these lower levels of um, Christianity or what they consider Christianity, but keep them in the frozen psychological states where they're not really doing the work that's required according to the Bible, according to the scripture of everyone who says, I am a Christian, you understand, or I am of God in Christ. So that's very important for us to kind of go over again because we said we want to deal with some of the mysteries and some of the things that the Almighty is showing us, and then we get to see where the writer of Hebrews touched on 
touched on saying, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ones are dull of hearing, ones don't even understand the Shema, the real importance of the Shema. It's like for a Muslim or Mohammedan, which, which are part of the family of Abraham, they even have what they call a Shahada. Anyone who's a Muslim even understands it's a basic declaration, even the Ethiopian eunuch, he understood, you understand? And he said that he believed, he admit that Yehoshua HaMoshiach, Bain Ha Elohim, who in the Hebrew, he says he bears witness, so even that right there was a witness, you understand? And that witness is binding. You see, some people say, well, he knows my heart, but then he says, confess out of your mouth. See, because confess out of your mouth means I know in my heart I want to be a Christian, but other people know I'm a Christian, so I can still be doing non-Christian things. If I say I'm a Christian out loud, then they'll see that, and I'll be able to do these non-Christian things. But then think about it. That helps us, too, if we're sincere, because we're like, wow. You understand? Wow. Like, if I do this, people will say I'm a hypocrite, and I would be a hypocrite, but I already told them what I am. So that helps. If you understand, it says all things work toward the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Not, and that's the key there, according to whose purpose? His purpose. Some, some want to um, fight I and I down because they say, oh, you're saying, because it's, it's, a, it's, it's rebuking and reproving. And not that it's easy even for us when we see something, we say we have to pray, we have to work, we have to change that, because we recognize that that is still giving us worldly, earthly baggage. You understand? And it's preventing really the metaphysical nature of our spirit, soul, and body from manifesting. You understand? Especially in this time. Especially in this time. One time they would have thought teachings like these were, were crazy, but like we said before, they're understanding all these things about the atom and the quantum, and even science is talking about dimensions and trying to go way, way out and out of space. But not, they don't want to go in their own soul. They don't want to go within. His Majesty said that that where are we to turn for answers? We're to go into the depths, go, go within, into the innermost of the inner, because Christ said that's where the kingdom of heaven is to be found. So Jesus or Jesus or Yeshua is not God the Father. He's not God the Father. Is he God? Well, what did Christ say about gods? He said that, that, and you will call gods in the word of Scripture, cannot be broken. You recall that particular part? He, he was actually quoting a psalm. There was a particular psalm that he was quoting where it says, I have said ye are gods. You understand? All of you are children of what? Of who? Of the Most High, of El Elyon. All of you are children of the Most High, but it says, but ye shall what? Ye shall die like men. You know, in Christianity, in the rebirth, you understand, we have to you know, we have to die. You see what I'm saying? Psychologically, the old soul, the old man has to die. That's the repentance to the dead works, those things that we did before we were illuminated, before we were enlightened about the truth and about what really is the reality, what's really at stake, both in this world, the life we're living now, and in the world to come. You understand? Some people see these scientific science fiction movies and if they're so realistic, then they begin to get, say, wow, because they begin to recognize there really might be some truth to it. But the Word has been telling us this from such time. Christ said, if I'm telling you earthly things and don't understand, how can I tell you of the heavens? You understand? Are there other beings? Of course there are other beings. But what you're worried about that when there's real work to be done down here on earth and in your hearts and your minds and your own soul? They're running away from that to repeat the same nonsense somewhere else. They can't do it. The earth is under quarantine, and they keep trying to break that quarantine, and stuff is going to be falling down from the heavens. That, you know, that's a prophecy right there. But here it says that God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. Psalm 80. Now, while we're going to God standing in the congregation of the mighty, while we're beginning right there, we're beginning there, we're going to have to get out with Tehillim. We're going to have to get the Tehillim, though we know this is what the Tehillim say. The Tehillim is the Hebrew, is the, the Hebrew Salsa or the Psalm book, the, the book of Psalms. What we call the book of Psalms is its own book in the Hebrew or Jewish liturgy, and it's called the Tehillim. The Tehillim is the book of Psalms, and here we have King James. 
Now, many will say King James is a good translation, and this is what we use, and King James only, and they go to this fanatical extreme. But we say the King James is the best reference, the best start-off reference. It's, it's a good foundation along with other Bibles to compare. But you got to get to get beyond the King James and get into the Masoretic Hebrew, especially coming from this so-called Western way, the way that we've already been put in a sort of a frozen psychological state of ignorance. So in order to break those bars, this is why we use the King James as a stepping stone or, or beginning step to the Met of and to the Ethiopic. Some try to run around that. You can't really run around that. You have to go in the degrees and the steps. You understand forward because it says that his word is purified seven times. So this is one time English. Now we go to the Hebrew. We're going to another level of that purification process in our consciousness. So give me one moment. Just make sure you take this down. Make sure you take this down. It's very, very important. All right. All right, um, the Tehillim, all right, because I would say just take my word on it, but I always say, you know, study these things and find out. I thought it was right up here on this. Um, study these things and find the truth for yourself as well. In other words, verify, verify, verify these truths. Um, give me one moment. I'm going to come for another part, another part of this. You could talk for a little bit of a delay, but make sure you take this down because we're going to try to clear this and move to the next part of this teaching so we can um, get into the nature, the nature of God, the nature of Elohim.